was given these flowers, made from recycled plastic straws, at the age of 10. I had travelled to Indonesia to run environmental education programs. Here, I was shocked at the level of pollution. It lined the streets. It was in the waterways. People were bathing in rivers of filthy water. However, I also saw something special in the chaos. I met kids who were so passionate about improving their communities. They were leveraging everything they had to do this. And this was clear in the innovative and creative ways they had come up with to educate their communities about waste management and the importance of caring for our beautiful environment. Kids have the passion and the commitment to change their world, and I kept these flowers to remind me of that. I am now 18, and I believe that young people have the ideas and the solutions to combat the climate issues facing us. However, our decision makers are not listening, and this needs to change. In 2019, Professor Jeanette Hartzakarp, a world leader in deliberative democracy, approached Millennium Kids, a youth-led environmental organisation. She had the idea of creating the first youth-led citizens' assembly on climate change in the world. A citizens' assembly is an event which brings together 50 to 100 participants via a stratified random sample mirroring the population. The participants are given a clear question to resolve called the charge, and at the event, they discuss, evaluate, and come up with a set of solutions to this posed question. So for our citizens' assembly, the charge was set to be, how can we in Western Australia collectively tackle climate change while supporting our places to thrive? And what does this mean for the way we live and our environment? Following the event, a report is then produced outlining the changes that participants called for, and this is then given to decision makers to be implemented. After researching, investigating and trialling, we decided that whilst we thought the 2,600-year-old deliberative democracy process was fantastic, it was not for kids. They needed more fun, more games, more variety and more activity. Just imagine a hundred randomly sampled 14-year-olds sitting in a room, reading, writing and listening for four days. So my team and I set out to run individual one-day deliberations across Western Australia, applying the elements of a citizens' assembly to see what happens when young people come together to deliberate and discuss issues such as climate change whilst having fun. In the past year, I have led four deliberations across regional Western Australia. And we have now refined the process and are creating a framework for other leaders to be change makers in their communities and to run these deliberations in their own schools, communities and organisations. The framework we are creating will provide educational resources so that the young people can gain a comprehensive understanding of climate change. We are doing this because we surveyed 250 young people about the climate issues concerning them most. Their answers showed a need for a better understanding of climate issues and their impacts. The educational resources we create will align with the Australian Year 9 and 10 Science and Humanities curriculum. It will seek to resolve the current concern that Australian schools are not sufficiently involved with the curriculum on climate change. In order for these events to be a long-lasting, sustainable method of creating change, we also need an army of young leaders to be trained with the skills to run them in their own schools, communities and organisations. So the framework we create will provide clear instructions for how to run these events. The days begin with participants learning about the climate issues facing their area through a series of videos and Q&As with experts. Following this, they participate in a range of activities, such as World Cafe, which gets them to come up with and discuss and evaluate individual solutions. 
After this, participants to sort ideas and select those which are top priorities. And to finish the day, the young people create a set of action items and a plan for how their ideas for change need to be implemented. After the event, a report is also produced, outlining the changes that participants called for. And this is then given to decision makers to be implemented. We are on a mission to create positive change, not just in our own communities, but in Australia and on a global scale. So the reports and ideas from each deliberation will be presented in uniform reports so that we can create a collection of reports which showcase and highlight the amazing and innovative and creative ideas from our young people and show what needs to be done to better our environment. Next year, we will start our piloted program across Western Australia, expanding nationwide in 2023 and into foreign languages in 2024. I think it's also important to acknowledge the different ideas for change which come out of each deliberation. WA is massive. We have many complex climate challenges, but we also have so many creative and innovative and diverse ideas for how to combat these. In Mundaring, an area with rich woodlands, the participants called for better solar policies and education surrounding plastic consumption. Whereas in Karatha, a mining town, the young people listed more basic options, such as promoting the use of reusable bags at stores, planting more trees and catching public transport. An important part of this process is to work with the major actors in the local economy to come to a compromise and to find solutions which work well for both parties. And in places like Karatha, this includes working alongside mining companies to find ways which individuals and organisations can work together and reduce their environmental impact whilst maintaining strong economic growth. But in order to find those compromises, we need those creative and diverse and innovative ideas from our young people. So we believe that youth engagement through climate deliberations is the answer because protests are polarising. They pull kids out of school, so the education sector hates them. Young people are given the opportunity to voice their opinions, but they're not actually being motivated or given the mechanisms to create the tangible change which we actually need. And for decision makers, it creates an awkward tension between the young people and the education sector, because by listening to the voices of the young people, the demands of the education sector are being silenced. But by listening to the demands of the education sector, the voices of the young people are being shut down. So the process we have developed provides teachers with the educational resources and an opportunity to teach critical thinking in schools. The outcomes are presented in a way which decision makers can use and understand. And young people are empowered because their voices are listened to and they are motivated in a way which encourages them to make their ideas real. Gen Z consists of 30% of the world's population. We are more creative than adults and have not yet been constrained by the pre-existing patterns of thought within society. Us young people, we have so much time and energy to make our ideas real and society better. We have a vision, we have a passion and a voice. We are a major source of untapped potential. And we are also the ones who will bear the burden of today's inaction and poor decisions. But there are ways out there which young people can use to amplify their voices. And this deliberative democracy process is just one of them. Imagine if these deliberations became a method used frequently to engage young people in the decision-making process. Kids can be the ones leading the way. Young people can have the opportunity to work with decision makers to create meaningful change. We can make Australia at the global forefront of climate action. 
We just need to inspire our leaders to take climate action, just like this flower inspired me. Thank you.